Coming next, the start of a new story. Chapter. <laughs> Chapter one of six of The Preacher Man by Jason Fisk, performed by the author. Thank you. I'm just going to jump right in here. In the afterlife, you are presented with your life in the form of a rope. Its length depends on how long you've lived, and for each and every misdeed or unkind act that you committed throughout your life, a knot is tied tight in your rope. The place that the living call purgatory is where the dead work on untying their knots so they can move on to better things. There are few whose rope is so twisted or are so angry that they choose not to even attempt to untie the knots. These souls wander the earth until they have a change of heart. Oscar is one such soul. It began in 1887 in a one-room schoolhouse in a small American town. The real name of this town will not be used in an effort to protect those who've moved on and their descendants, many of whom are not aware of their own history. I'll call the town Black River on this particular day, a young female teacher stood in front of her full classroom for the first time. Her heart beat quickly, as it was just how she had imagined it would be. Each and every student seemed well cared for and extremely respectful. They sat in their seats, eagerly awaiting their instructions. Good morning, class, she said, with her hands properly folded in front of her. My name is Miss Addison. She turned, picked up a piece of chalk, and began writing her name on the board. This is how you spell my name. She tapped the chalkboard. I would like you all to take a minute and think about one sentence that you would like to write on the board in which you share something about yourself. And then, one by one, starting with the youngest, I'd like you all to come up and write that sentence on the board here. Do you all understand? As soon as she had given the directions, there was a loud series of guttural groans coming from the back of the corner of the schoolhouse. <laughs> she squinted to see where it was coming from. All the children giggled as they shifted in their seats to get a better view. There, sitting in the back, dim corner of the school was a large man rocking back, back and forth on a three-legged stool. It looked like it was gonna break under his weight and movement. His hands were buried deep in the sides of his de denim overalls. Excuse me, she said, as she stood on her tiptoes and pointed to the big man. He looked up, but continued rocking. Yes, you, she said. Miss Addison could see that he wasn't right. His eyes looked dull and gray, and his mouth hung, hung open in an unintelligent manner. Miss Addison's cheeks began to redden. You need to leave this instant, she said, as she looked around the classroom. She grabbed a foot-long ruler from her desk and began waving it around. I don't know who you think you are, but your presence here is unwelcome and, and just plain obscene. She spat the words from her mouth. Ah. Miss Addison jumped when she felt someone touch her elbow. A student had come up beside her while she was focused on a large groaning man in the corner. Excuse me, the young man said. That's just Big Tom Wiseman. Didn't nobody tell you about him, the young man asked. Most certainly not, Miss Edison said, and the correct way to say that is, didn't anyone tell you? He's been in school here for a long, long time, as long as we can remember, the student said. His mama said he's no use to them on the farm, and no one up there has ever stopped him from coming to school. Does he always make those horrid noises, Miss Edison asked? Yeah. No, ma'am, but he, we ain't never had a teacher as pretty as you either. I'll talk to him for you and see if we can't talk some sense into him. Thank you. What's your name, young man? Name's Oscar, ma'am. I'm going to be the town's next reverend, he said as he walked back to Big Tom and whispered something in his ear. Big Tom got up and walked out of the schoolroom with Oscar. For that day onward, Big Tom and Oscar were inseparable. Big Tom followed Oscar around like a lost puppy, and he would do whatever Oscar asked of him, even kill. Oscar's father, Isaac, had moved to Black River Falls as an adult and claimed that he had spoken directly to the Lord God Almighty through the Holy <laughs> Ghost. He said that God had told him to build a church in the town and spread the word. He tried to start a church in Black River, but couldn't convince people to become members of his church. He couldn't get people to visit his part-time church, part-time barn, more than once. 
That was until he came up with a plan. During a severe dry spell, he told the townspeople that the Lord God would send rain if they all paid him. At first, the townspeople didn't believe him, refused to pay, and mumbled unkind words to him as he passed them on the street. Well, needless to say, Isaac was irate. How dare you, heathen, smite the name of the mighty Lord God Almighty, he said in the middle of the town meeting, his fists waving wildly above his head. The Lord God Almighty sees the doubt in your hearts, and he's unhappy, very unhappy with you, he said. The Lord God Almighty will bring a plague on this town, just like he did a long time ago. A long, long, long time ago, far, far away. His face had turned purple, and the vein on his forehead had bulged with every word spoken. That night, he packed his saddlebags with food, water, and half a stick of dynamite. I'll be back for too long, he told Oscar. And if anybody asks, tell them I went to the woods to pray for their souls. What you got the dynamite for, Oscar asked. Never mind you, he said, and backhanded the boy. Stick to what concerns you. He mounted up and rode away. Now, before Isaac had ventured into Black River and tried to start his church, he had tried his hand at mining and knew firsthand the powerful effects of dynamite. He had climbed down after a friend who did not amble out of the shaft when his shift was over. When he got to him, he saw that the dynamite had been set off too close to the detonator, and despite any outward injuries, his friend was dead. Isaac remembered the man and used man had used when he opened the dead friend's eyelids and saw that the whites of his eyes had turned red, blood red. Concussed was the word. A year prior, in his travel to Black River, about a half day's ride out, Isaac had noticed an enormous tree where a large flock of crows congregated at night. He rode out to it that night. The crows' shadows eerily perched beneath the bright moonlight. He was sure to dismount quite, quite some distance from the tree so as not to disturb the roosting crows. He grabbed the half stick of dynamite, lit it, and threw it toward the base of the tree where it detonated with a bright flash of light and a resounding boom. Birds, along with some of the lower branches themselves, immediately fell from the tree. The birds that had roosted in the top half of the tree began to fly away. About three or four flaps into their flight, the birds went limp and lifelessly <laughs> fell from the sky. <laughs> Isaac laughed to himself as he quickly collected the dead birds and filled two burlap potato sacks with dead crows. Concussed, he said to himself. Isaac rode into Black River an hour and a half before dawn broke. He worked quickly and quietly to spread the dead birds throughout the town, and then he went home to wait. When the suffocating sun climbed its way fully above the horizon was when Isaac decided to venture back into town and see what had become of his handiwork. Sure enough, everybody that was awake had stopped their daily activities and started speculating as to what had happened to the dead birds. Isaac smugly walked about town, making sure his presence was felt. A town meeting was called for later that evening, and numerous community leaders made a point of asking Isaac if he would please attend the meeting, to which Isaac sleepily stated that he would be more than happy to attend. That evening, in the schoolhouse, the God-fearing folk of Black River took a collection to pay Isaac to put the town back in God's good graces, and also asked God for some rain. The next day, it rained and it continued to rain for weeks after, saving their crops. They made the believers happy and the skeptics angry, believing that they might have spent their money a day too soon. The Preacher Man by Jason Fisk. Please tune in next week for part two of this.